In today's episode, Coach Katie and I talk about all things pregnancy and how it affects your fitness goals. And it can be really difficult of seeing your physique change or having different changes in your body. So I hope that you share this with a friend. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of those good things, and we'll catch you on the inside. We had a team meeting earlier this week, and we talked about some overrated and underrated topics, which you guys really love over here on the podcast. And we had a polarizing one that I thought I would bring up. It was Stanley Cups. (laughs) And Katie is a hater of Stanley Cups, so I thought I would give her the floor to talk about why she thinks that they're overrated. For starters, I was not always a hater of Stanley Cups, but I will say that I've had nothing but bad luck with my Stanley Cup purchases, um, but not this one. So we we cannot judge this cup right here, but the ones with the straws, I've had three, and the straws have broken on every single one of them. Now, like I said, I do have a toddler who drinks <laughs> out of them, so she could be destroying them, but I feel like for the price that you pay... It should uphold, up Correct. withstand. Yes, a nice sturdy straw, <laughs> I feel like, is just something you should expect. Um, so now I feel like they are not quite as great as everyone thinks they are, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like determined to not get a Stanley because it was like the rage. So I, I wanted to go against the grain. I, I don't, I can admit it that I don't want to always do what everyone else does. I kind of want to like forge my own path. And so even though, of course, so many people have hydro flasks, I felt like I've been with my hydro flask. I'm going to stay with it. And I still love it and use it. But I did go to like an REI or something like that. And they had these ones, which if you're listening to this, you have no idea what I'm referring to. But (laughs) it's the one with the built-in straw where it like flips down. And I didn't know they made these because the just the straw really has never hit for me because they can break and they're hard. You can't like just then you can't like flip it over and it's a whole thing. So I actually have become a Stanley girl after all. And it's because of this straw is a little bit more comfortable for my lips than the Hydro Flask straw. So I'm a, I'm a Stanley girl for now. We'll see though. We'll, we'll see, see how that goes. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> uh, we, now the whole podcast is not about Stanley cups today. It is about pregnancy and how it affects your goals. And Coach Katie, if you did not know, first go ahead and give her a follow. I will have everything in the description or the show notes. She's not only just kick ass and super strong and jacked, but she is also a mother and perinatal certified. So she's been able to help a ton of the PD mamas reach their goals and accomplish what they need to while also doing the same for herself. So we wanted to talk about how pregnancy is going to affect your fitness goals and whether that is looking at your physical goals or different things going on throughout your days, your energy levels. We wanted to be able to go go through that. So Katie, welcome to the podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been perinatal certified working with moms, and it's been so, so nice. I knew instantly once I became a mom and like learning and going through my pregnancy and just the lack of education that I experienced while going through that, took it upon myself to educate myself so that way other mothers didn't feel the way I felt when going through it. Um, so I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to dive into it. Yeah, let's start with physical abilities because that's the the big one I feel like most people really uh, (laughs) harp on, understandably, of their bodies are changing and their goals are going to change and their abilities are going to change. So what are some of those things when it comes to pregnancy within physical abilities that do change? Um, So right off the bat, you, not instantly, but in most cases, you will notice that you're going to start gaining weight. um, And then eventually after certain amount of weeks, your belly starts to grow, um, your center of gravity can shift, your balance can be off, um, and then your shortness of breath. And it's just something that while you're training, all these things impact that. And that was something that I think threw me off at first. I knew that things were going to change, obviously. And I just didn't expect it to change as drastically in a sense that it actually did. The shortness of breath was something that really caught me (laughs) off guard. And that's something that even now I have a handful of of clients on my roster who are in the beginning stages of their pregnancies. So I've recently been going through all of this stuff to them, like, here's what we can expect. Um, here's how we're going to have to end up modifying as we go. And the physical aspects are just the beginning 
of all of it <laughs> and making all of the adjustments for them is going to be fun. So <laughs> when we're looking at things like the your center of gravity changing or having more shortness of breath, are those things that can just be expected and there's really no way around it? Or are there ways to work with that to put you in a better spot? So we can take it either one. Depending on the person, of course, everyone is individual. I like to try and work around it, um, limiting the intensity of your training sessions if you are experiencing some pretty intense shortness of breath right away. Um, and then if you're having some issues with like your center of gravity, you're having some trouble, like let's say doing something like a split squat or something like that. We can remove that from your programming, your training, give you something that's more stable instead because we don't have to just push through right now. Like when you're pregnant, the point is not to just hit PRs and build a ton of muscle. Your point is to stay mobile, have a healthy cardiovascular system, keep your health up, and then, of course, the health of the baby. Um, so depending on the person, of course, and that's going to be the answer to a lot of things is it depends. Um, there's never one fine answer across the board for everyone because every pregnancy does look so different. But I like to make small maneuvers through each person. When you mention of just the lack of education or information you got when you were going through pregnancy, and especially with talking about like these beginning stages or these changes that were happening, what did you feel like the least prepared for? Or what are things that you really talk to clients of like, hey, your doctor probably didn't say this, but the core, like your core as a whole throughout pregnancy, I didn't know as much until about maybe 30 weeks. And in my mind, that was too late, but it wasn't too late because it's never too late. Um, but my doctor said nothing about the fact that my abs were going to literally separate. I mean, if you think about it, it just makes sense, right? <laughs> but in my mind, when I was going through courses and learning things about it, I was like, oh, shit, like I'm going to have significant ab separation and I'm going to have to focus on rehabbing that and building my strength up more than I guess I thought. Um, and that's what I'm running into right now. A lot of these clients that I'm working with, they know this because I am adamant to everyone <laughs> about just like TVA breathing and core control as a whole. Um, I recently had a conversation with someone who I sent a video about core breathing. And I know you do the same thing like core bracing. She's like, why am I doing this if I'm not pregnant? And I was like, well, I mean, it's good for everyone being able to utilize your core properly. But if there comes a time where you get pregnant, you already have the bases down and you're confident in your abilities to continue that through your pregnancy. And now she's pregnant. So <laughs> it works out. And that was just one thing that I was totally caught off guard by. But once I learned it, obviously, it was so much better. Um, it helped my lower back pain even. I didn't have much, but I started to. And I remember reading through some of the courses I was taking. And it says, like, well, if you can have a stronger core and more stability, that can help your lower back. Not take it away, obviously. But mm -hmm. um, And I was like, my doctor didn't even think to tell me that. Like, they just told me to rest or, like, stretch. But mm -hmm. yeah, so that's something. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely second that on the core. I feel like also I know that we have a whole series about postpartum. So if you're listening to this and you're like, enough about pregnancy, what do I do <laughs> after? I will link. We did a three-part series that Katie absolutely crushed talking about postpartum, what to do, what to expect, um, and different things you would likely really want to hear before you go into the postpartum experience uh, as a whole. But whether it is postpartum or during pregnancy, or like you said, even if you're not pregnant or don't even plan to get pregnant, your core can make such an incredible difference of being able to also have a less painful delivery or a faster recovery after delivery and be able to help you as you care for your child as they're starting to you know, be a human. If you don't have good core strength, you're going to result to having really bad posture and that can cause a lot of issues when and it is finally time for you to focus back on yourself and building your muscle. Now it's like, oh, I have to do all of these corrective things because I didn't pay attention to any of that during pregnancy. So I think core is so important. And sometimes it can feel so tiny of like, okay, I have to sit here and breathe a certain way. Like I breathe throughout the day. Like I'm, I'm good. But truthfully, like those small things can build up to such a huge difference. And I've seen it in you specifically of just like how your body has changed since pregnancy and being able to get back to the way your core looks is 
insane. It impresses me all of the time. But it's like that just goes to show of, like you said, it's never too late, although it's always good to start sooner rather than later. Uh, Like being able to get your core to where it is. I know it's been a lot of small but very intentional movements. Yes. And that's something that we go over as well, doing, like you said, the breathing throughout the day. It's something so minuscule and so small that doesn't feel important but pays off so much in the long run. And it's more than just like doing crunches every day. It's more than just doing like a bunch of hanging leg raises and things like that. Um, But learning how to go about that and learning how to activate everything properly, uh, it has been a game changer for me. (laughs) For sure. Now, you also talked about uh, range of motion changing. Now, um, I think that people would envision, of course, as my stomach gets bigger, then some things I'm not going to have as much range of motion. But are there other reasons that some Someone should look out for their range of motion during pregnancy? Yeah, so you're actually more flexible during pregnancy with the shift in hormones. So sometimes that can increase your risk for injury. And with that, if you're feeling any like tweaks while doing movements, not even just because of the belly, like you said, but let's say you're doing a lunge or even just like the leg press or a squat as a whole, um, if you're feeling those things within your knees or something like that, that's going to be an example to where you're going to want to limit the range of motion for if you're doing a squat with a dumbbell or still a barbell, you can put a box there or just on the leg press. You don't have to come down as far, even if your belly isn't in the way, right? Um, But that's something that we also have to keep an eye out on. And I go through a lot of training execution videos with clients who are pregnant. I'm more annoying about it to those clients. (laughs) Rightfully so. Yes. If you know, you know. Um, Some clients, I'm like, okay, please send it. But if you're pregnant, I want to see those videos of your training because I want to make sure there's no severe imbalances that are starting to occur and that your form is still staying good throughout this whole time because of that shift in gravity too. Yeah. And even with your body changing, you can still focus on your health, which I think is something that you really did exemplify throughout your pregnancy of, hey, this does look very different, (laughs) but I am still showing up. And I think that that kind of leads into like that mental aspect of you're having to do mindset shifts. And you already mentioned it of, okay, the goal isn't to hit these PRs and gain all of this muscle. Um, The goal is to keep and grow a healthy child. But what else kind of goes on when it comes to those mindset shifts um, that you experience throughout pregnancy? Just keeping in mind with the long-term benefits and the long-term goals, like we said already, the healthy baby, but also your postpartum recovery, because it's easy to get lazy during pregnancy. I've been there. There's the days where you're just completely exhausted, fatigued, worn out from everything else, or just worn out from growing a child, that the last thing you want to do is go move your body. But those are the instances where you have to think like, okay, how will this affect me nine, 10 months from now if you're at the beginning? Or how how will this affect me while I'm in labor, dying, not sleeping <laughs> for 24 hours? How will this affect my ability to recover from labor if I just end up being this couch potato because it's easier? And mm-hmm. it really is easier. Um I was a almost almost a couch potato <laughs> my whole first trimester, but I remember I would tell my husband Zach to force me like to get up and at least walk, and that's something that I am honestly very proud of because I felt like <laughs> crap. And walking would always help me feel a little bit better. And once all of the nausea and fatigue went away, I was like, okay, I'm not in terrible shape because I've stayed active, and I was able to keep the long term health of myself. And my growing baby at the forefront of everything. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Of course, there's going to be situations where someone really should be on bed rest or they have different things that like their doctor for the health of them and their baby, they need to slow down. But outside of those special situations, what would you recommend of, okay, maybe it is just go out and walk, but like when you are tired, how do you choose between how do I push myself? Because it's not the same as pushing yourself when you're not pregnant. So how did you really make the decision of, hey, walking is enough for me right now, or I do need to go and move my body? 
For me personally, it was the decision based upon what have I done either that day or how has like the last week been for me? Um, am I having any aches and pains? Like, am I genuinely going to fall asleep right now? And once I could go through that mini checklist, for example, if I was very sedentary all day or I know that I was just being lazy and the couch sounded better, then I would force myself through. I would go to the gym and I would work out whatever that looked like for that day. And being able to gauge the difference between going to the gym and having a full workout and going to the gym and just simply moving to not get stiff and to not get those aches and pains – is going to look different for everyone, um, but just always keeping, once again, the long-term goals in mind of keeping yourself healthy, keeping your postpartum recovery, making it easier, and making sure that the health of your baby is the number one goal. And staying active is going to help with all of that. So that was always something where at the end of the day, if I knew that I was just being sedentary or just working all day or just simply being lazy, I would force myself to go. But that's also, once again, the kind of person that I am. <laughs> um, but I'm that upfront about it with clients too. I mean, I'll ask them, hey, like, are you actually tired? Are you actually exhausted? Or are you just feeling like you like can't do this right now because mm -hmm. of whatever it may be? And usually they can come back to me and say, well, I was probably just being like a little lazy and making excuses. So then I leave it up to them still. I'm never going to force someone to do something they don't want to do. But knowing like, okay, maybe I am making excuses right now and it, it will only take me 45 minutes. I'll feel better when I'm done. Usually gets the trick done. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it can be hard of, okay, the doctor didn't give me a lot of information and I don't know if I am trying right. to push myself. And so having those conversations and asking those questions can be so helpful just to have someone be like reflective and introspective of, okay, is this really a decision that I am feeling so exhausted and I need to rest? And I say this even with people who aren't pregnant is like, it's all about trial and error. And you're going to train sometimes when you should have rested and sat right. your ass down. And yeah. you are going to sit your ass down when you should have gotten up and trained. And there's always going to be situations that's never going to be perfect of like, I nailed it on the head perfectly oh, yeah. each time. <laughs> but it's being able to take the times of like, okay, I was kind of being lazy there. I should have gone up and gone to the gym so that the next time when you're in the same predicament, it's like, okay, I can discern the difference. I'm going to get up and go do something. So I think that those questions and making someone like reflect on it while also telling them, hey, these are what the guidelines are and here's what's going to help you have the best pregnancy is like such an incredible support system. Yeah, because I, and that's it. I mean, I just want to be supportive. I want to help you keep your health the best that it can be. But at the end of the day, I I'm not going to make you go do all of these things during your pregnancy that you may do like before you got pregnant or something like that, but I'm not going to force you to be as perfect as you were pre-pregnancy because that's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And I always speak to my clients also about I'm never going to hold them to an expectation that I don't hold myself to. Mm -hmm. And when I was pregnant, I had those days where maybe I should have gone to the gym, but instead I like stayed home and did something else. But I knew the next day, like, okay, I was a lazy piece of shit yesterday. <laughs> like I have to at least try today. Yeah. And that's something that I harp on all the time because that's not fair. If I was like, you're pregnant, you need to get all of your training <laughs> in because this is just what you should do when I didn't do that to myself. Um, and I think that is just a relatable part of me that my clients appreciate more so rather than being like, you have to do this, you have to do that. And even when it comes to like nutrition side of things too, you're going to have food aversions, you're not going to hit your calories every day, no. your macros aren't going to be perfect. No. And I don't expect that. Um, but some people just get so wrapped up in it because they're used to me being like, okay, well, like, you know, let's step it up. Like, what the hell are you doing? Um, but that's not how it is. Mm -hmm. And I was nothing close to perfect every single day during my pregnancy, <laughs> and no one is. Um, so that's just one thing that I always, it's just about open communication and figuring out, once again, it's all individual, what works for what person, and going from there. Yeah, and each woman's pregnancy is going to be very different. I've had clients go through pregnancy where they're able to keep up basically their regular lifting and routine mm -hmm. 
all the way through their pregnancy. Right. And I have clients that from the start of their pregnancy, they've needed to take daily naps yep. and we need to <laughs> change their schedule. Like it's looked vastly different for people who might have been in the same boat going into the pregnancy, but it just hits different, honestly, There's, for each person. Like, every person. It really does. It is insane. <laughs> I remember I had to take like daily naps throughout my pregnancy and at like three o'clock every day, I'd be like, well, I need to set an alarm for 30 minutes. Otherwise, I'm not going to survive the rest of the day. <laughs> and if you know me, you know that like that's not realistic for me. I wake up at five and I go all day until like nine or 10. And that was something that I mentally was struggling to accept because like I don't have time for a nap when it's either I would make the time or my body, body would force would. me just to shut <laughs> Your down. body would do it for right. you. <laughs> so I, I had to. And that was a huge, huge adjustment for me. Thankfully, I was able to keep up with my training throughout my whole pregnancy. I think eventually we cut it down to like three days a week instead of four. Um, but it was so nice to have that also option to know that, okay, today isn't going to be the perfect day, but tomorrow will be. And moving through that for the most part, keeping it all up helped so much in my postpartum recovery. And even then, I mean, it was still a bunch of changes, but well, that's a different day. <laughs> um, and it just always pays off in paying attention to what those signs are for you during your pregnancy is what's going to get you the best pregnancy. Yeah. And I think another aspect is just you showing up for your mental health. If that's something that you know, having that time for yourself, moving your body does make you feel better, truthfully, yes. not just, oh, it helps because I look better or it's helping for the certain goal. It's like, this legitimately makes me feel better. Right. And so that way that you could still pour in, even if it didn't look the same way that it did before, of like, I need to keep some semblance of like this right. routine of going to the gym, even if it doesn't look the same. Yeah, just for my own sanity. There were days where, once again, I could have just sat at home or stayed in bed or what have you, but I was like, just a walk. And even this morning, I woke up at five still, like always, and I walked outside for 20 minutes because it just makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings us into, and you've mentioned it a few times, of just energy levels and fatigue. And this is the one I feel like is one of the biggest hitters where the physical change might be very aware that it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but the energy levels of it's just like, okay, I'm going to go through pregnancy and then like the hard stuff and like the energy stuff comes after pregnancy. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, I've had a lot of clients like hit upside the face with, oh my gosh, my energy vastly changed. Yeah, it's fun. Um, <laughs> it's great stuff. And like I said, for someone who is just constantly going all the time, that was something that really got me down was just being so damn tired all of the time. And you have that first trimester where it usually kicks in right off the bat for most people, once again, not everyone. And then your second trimester, there's usually like a small burst in energy hormones are starting to kind of level out a little bit. And then your third trimester, you can, in most cases, get fatigue again, become very tired again. Um, and that just goes back to being able to read those signals for yourself. What does that look like for you? Um, thinking more so of, do I want to take today and just sleep and rest and honor my body and these feelings that I'm having? Or do I need to kind of run through that checklist once again and force myself to get up and at least try to move? Uh, that was... It's quite the experience, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, but I think knowing that going in of having to the expectation of, hey, my energy levels are going to change. Mm -hmm. And that's something I always try to be upfront with people of like, hey, you might be someone who has never napped before in your life. But if you feel like you need a nap, like I want you to take the nap right. and then let me know what happened by the next check-in and we'll change the game plan for what makes sense. Because like Katie said, no one's exactly the same. No one's going to have the same plan. And that's why it does depend on what all's going on. But it's like, even for a person, like I don't put in a plan and it's like, this is what we're going to follow all through your pregnancy. Right. It's we take it honestly, week, week by week. week. <laughs> it's how are you feeling right now? What needs to get done? Like, what are the hurdles that we're facing? And like, let's figure it out where yeah. a 
lot of my pregnant clients or postpartum clients, like I'm changing things, not as far as like, oh, I'm changing their macros all of the time. But it's like, I recently just had a client that she was training four days a week throughout her pregnancy. We split it to doing like home and gym workouts because that was what was going to work for her. Then we ended up going to three days a week and changing it to full body because it got too mentally difficult to be like, I'm going in for a leg day or I'm going in for this. So we changed it to three day full body sessions. And then we saw of she was getting them done, but not regularly getting three in in a week. And she had so much going on within life stuff. And it was like, hey, what makes sense, and especially with needing to take a nap every day, is let's just train two days a week, and let's make them still full body days. And then I gave her other stretches to do, but her goal is to get some sort of movement. And that doesn't mean always going to the gym. It's like, hey, if you can get away and go for a walk and show up for yourself in that way, if it's doing a yoga uh, video that you're watching on YouTube, or if it's just walking around your house and cleaning stuff up because you literally can't think about going and doing something for yourself because everything is like (laughs) craziness. It's like even just moving around the house and picking stuff up, like that's a great way to get movement in. So I think like a huge thing within pregnancy is first recognizing that you got to go with the flow because literally the the pregnancy is going to go the way that it goes for you. And you have I don't want to say little say in it because you do have a say in how your attitude is and then you you can do things that help it and like benefit you. But at the end of the day, it's just this is the fact of the matter. This is my new reality. And what is the change that I need to make right now? Exactly. And that just all goes back to still keeping like your goals in mind, your fitness goals, your health goals. But still keeping in mind like, hey, it's not going to look like that every day. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad you want to be able to go train your ass off four days a week or hit legs. Like you see these pregnant chicks on Instagram (laughs) still deadlifting like 350 pounds. And that's great. Yeah, I'm like, go you. Go you. I love that for them. (laughs) But for me, I cannot imagine going in and deadlifting more than 135 pounds. I remember I trap bar deadlift like 225 for three one time. And I was like, you know, I could probably keep going, but I probably shouldn't. And I could just tell that that wasn't going to serve me in the long run because I just felt like ass afterwards, even though I could do it. Um, But making little tweaks like that, and that's some things that I speak to too with clients, like even though you can do it, doesn't mean you should do it. And just because you think it feels good right now and then you stop and you're like, well, it it was fine. I finished anyway. Just didn't feel the greatest when I got done. I was like, that's a red flag, dude. Like, Let's not do that anymore. We'll change it up. We'll lower your volume. We'll take that movement out as a whole. If I can't trust you to like not go balls to the walls with it, um, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. (laughs) Now, I know your energy was definitely down like you've mentioned through it, but you come from a background of very regularly training and getting after it. So how was that going through it mentally of like, okay, now I don't get to do this thing for myself. And I'm also taking these naps. That isn't that what I'm used to. Like, what did that look like? Because that that is very difficult of you have something you love to do and you want to do, but you might not, like you said, you might be able to, but it might not be the best or you might not even be able to do that. So how did you deal with that mentally or even how do you help with clients with that? Because that that's very difficult. That's even something like I fear within mm-hmm. going through pregnancy and postpartum of training is a very regular thing in my life and it's something that gives a lot to me. Right. And so what, what does that look like? Um, for myself personally, when I was pregnant, it ate at me mentally, not be able to do what I was used to doing. Um, I was so strong pre-pregnancy. I mean, that's all I did. I competed. I lifted a lot. Like it was just, I felt like an identity in itself. And then you get pregnant and your new identity instantly, well, not full identity, but for, okay. (laughs) But um, now you're growing this baby and you're becoming a mother and things just shift like that. And accepting that new part of me was so challenging. And how I worked through it was just being very vocal about it um, to the people that I had around me, um, telling my coach, at, to Alex was my coach at the time, and being like, this is really eating at me because I have to I have to freaking nap for 30 minutes before I go to the gym every day. If I trained before I napped, it was stupid and it was a waste <laughs> of my time. And I remembered like, I just, it's something as simple as that bothered me so much. So speaking about it and finding ways around it and just accepting it, honestly, taking that nap at three o'clock every day. I remember it and I'd wake (laughs) up at like 3.30 and I would eat 
have a little bit of caffeine and go do my like 45 minute training session. And then I felt like the baddest bee on the block (laughs) because I got it done and Mm -hmm. I feel better once I train. Um, Just mentally that shift and sharing it with everyone has been huge. And when I see clients having struggles with it, I personally use that story and I remind them like, hey, this is all normal. You're not the only one that may have these feelings. And it's okay that if you have to change the routine, change the plan and find ways to get through it, or it's okay if you just can't get through it. Like that's okay. The season of life through pregnancy is shifting every single day in so many different ways that once we just grasp it and kind of just lean into it rather than not accepting the changes that are being made, it will go a lot smoother. (laughs) I love that you mentioned lean into it because I think that, and I I use this of, let's say even just something like crappy happens where your day gets rechanged, like just a normal day and things get moved around. I used to get so stuck and like, this was how the day was supposed to go. This is what (laughs) I wanted to happen. This is what I envisioned happening. And I would get like so sour and ruin my day of like, this isn't how it was supposed to go. And one thing that's really helped me is like, this is your reality. Right. Of it's not what you wanted, it's not this, but what is your reality right now and what decision do you have to make from that? And that has changed in so many aspects of my life. Anytime I start like complaining about something, I'm like, regardless, like you can still vent, you can still have your feelings, that's all validated. But at the end of the day, this is the reality of what your situation is. So what are you going to do about it? Exactly. And there are times where I've just had a shitty attitude. Right. And I've realized that doesn't help me. (laughs) That doesn't help the people around me. It definitely doesn't help them like me more um, or be nice to me uh, because I'm not being a nice person. And it just makes like the day really shitty. And while, of course, it might be like oversimplified to apply that to pregnancy, that is the reality of you are now pregnant. So what are the next steps and what needs to be done? And even if you wish it was different, you wish you had more energy, you wish you could deadlift 300 pounds like some other pregnant ladies, like that's all fine and dandy, but what is your reality right now? So I think that that is so powerful. Just lean into it. This is your new normal for right now. And it's a temporary normal for the most part of, yes, there's, of course, an even new, new normal right. after pregnancy. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. But it's, it's all about you have these these chunks of your life and anything that you do that look different. When mm-hmm. I was in college, oh, looked gosh. very different <laughs> than what life looks like now. Oh, yeah. When I do become a mom, like it's going to look very different than how life looks now. And oh, I yeah. can't like cling on to what it used to be in the past. It's what's my reality right now. Right. Yeah. And just working through those with people who support you is huge. And even from like a working mom standpoint, I know that there has been times where you and I were like, okay, I'm not a very good communicator sometimes, but just communicate with me what's going on. And I also remember being like, Sue, I swear I'm going to get better at this because now my life is totally different and I don't know how the hell I'm handling it. And I remember being like early postpartum and we were like, doing work things, of course. And you were like, just just let me know when things are going wrong or like when you need help or when you need space. And I struggled with that because my pre-pregnancy was like, no, I'm fucking fine. I've got all the time in the world. I can do this. I can do that. I don't need help. And I was like, oh shit, like I do need help. And leaning into that even more once again, just accepting it and moving through it rather than trying to like navigate away from it has been so helpful. And yeah. Yeah. I think like you saying of like, that wasn't like me before. That's not how I am. It's like taking away of these definitions that you've put on yourself of this is the way that I am. And it's like, yeah, that was the way that you are. But again, new circumstance and new situation. And I bring that up with clients a lot of the plan needs to change if the circumstance changes. And I think that that is also very helpful of just, oh, it's not just this is my plan and I keep going on it. It's if there there's changes in my circumstance and in my day to day, then for this plan to work the best, that was made for a different circumstance. Exactly. So just being able to accept that and have the space to even have that conversation, um, I think is so, so helpful. Yeah. 
Now, with this, um, when we talk about different goals to have during pregnancy, what are goals that make sense to still have? Because all these other goals change, and you have to kind of let go of those for a little bit. So what are goals that really make sense to have? Because you do need to, again, have goals that align with the context and the situation. So what are some goals that either you have or ones that you set for clients throughout pregnancy? A lot of goals that I like to try and set for clients throughout pregnancy will be things that seem so simple on paper, yet can also be hard to do every single day, given the circumstances, right? So things like a step goal based upon where we were, um, certain cardio goals if they don't like that, um, limited training sessions, and maybe a protein goal instead of a calorie goal if we're working through for food aversions. Um, things that, once again, do seem so simple, but in their reality, in their season, their chapter, whatever you want to call it, um, that can make them feel so good if I can maneuver those goals to something that they can hit each day. Mm -hmm. It gives them a sense of like empowerment. They're feeling successful. And at the end of the day, that makes them feel more motivated, which is going to get us further along throughout their pregnancy. And they're going to want to keep going with this. Whereas sometimes I can also see where if someone isn't hitting goals, they like almost get deterred from sure. what they should be doing. And and they just get frustrated or they get down on themselves and they just would rather give up than feel like they're just not hitting goals. So why try? So making those not small goals once again, yeah. but different for everyone. So that way we have achievable ones. And then I can maneuver them like, okay, you're doing X, Y, and Z each day. Let's try maybe like 30 minutes of mobility or yoga also. And then if that goes well, maybe we will get that other training session back. Um, so that's what I do with a lot of the clients. And it was pretty similar for what I had to. Um, I was able, like, again, to go through most of my regularly programmed stuff. Uh, but making those adjustments, even with just calories, was something I did all of the time. I remember I couldn't eat most of my regular protein sources, and I would get so pissed off because, like, it's protein. You need it. But I just adjusted, had shakes, and hit my calorie goal as often as I could, too. Yeah, and that's something I'll put in place for a lot of clients is if I – sometimes I'll do a calorie and a protein goal, but sometimes I put in macro minimums that they have to hit or calorie minimums. And this, again, depends on the person where sometimes throughout pregnancy, maybe they need a calorie maximum. Yeah. But for some of my clients, <laughs> they need a calorie minimum if they routinely won't eat enough food. And so we have to put in, hey, I need you to at least get this in yes. place because that is so much more achievable for them them. And I love that you mentioned that too, because if you are already going into a day where you like know you can't achieve everything, right. that is so discouraging if I'm just like, I'm not going to win right. and I want to be able to win. right? And if I already know I'm not going to be able to win, then I don't want to do it because it just feels pointless. Right. It is, it, that's where like the all or nothing, like I really relate to that of it just feels like, why even bother? Right. Because why I even can't try? even get close to the finish right. line. Like I will throw up <laughs> if I eat 130 yes. grams of protein. Exactly. So just letting me hit like 110 or 100 may even be something that I can do and I'll feel so much better about myself. Yes. And you get to the end of the day and you just feel accomplished versus like beat down of like another day I didn't get it done. Or maybe that was just an unrealistic goal to have in place or just the wrong goal for right. the wrong time. Yep. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Now, with talking about clients that might need a calorie maximum, I know that there's obviously going to be weight gain when it comes to pregnancy, but is there anything that you do to limit or manage weight gain, or is there a reason to manage weight gain when it comes to pregnancy? So as a whole, managing weight gain throughout pregnancy can do a lot of different things. It can just be easier on your joints. Aches and pains will not go away. That's just, once again, it depends. But if you're not as heavy with unwanted weight gain, it's not as hard on your joints. Um, you can get preeclampsia, which can be very dangerous as you get further along within your pregnancy. There's a chance for gest gestational diabetes, which can cause problems throughout labor or even going into labor early. Uh, so there's a lot of good reasons to 
not limit and make it your goal to not gain any weight yeah, or to like stay right. I need to stay this way right. you like, don't want to <laughs> be like fucking shredded when you're <laughs> six months pregnant but you if you're my client you know what I'm about to say but you don't want to treat yourself like an asshole and you don't mm-hmm. want to eat like an asshole just because you're pregnant and that's a whole nother conversation I can have <laughs> but like eating for two is not real and just minimizing the fat gain and the extra body weight gain will do enough alone that we don't have to stress too much about being in a deficit or cutting foods out or this and that. Like if you want a cupcake, have the fucking cupcake. I mean, that's fine, but just be mindful, treat yourself kind and think of like the long-term pros from making those smart decisions and limiting the weight gain where you can. And that makes postpartum a little bit easier too, where yes. again, it's it's not all about, oh, you have to stay the leanest version of yourself. Right. It's all of those health factors of, hey, this is going to be better for me and for the baby. But I also am in a situation so often with mothers freshly postpartum oh gosh, where yeah. they just feel awful about themselves. And I say only understandably, not because I think that they should feel awful about themselves, but I, I know that as someone who's been in their body, and then seeing it in such a different way and you still have limitations postpartum, that can be extremely difficult. And people turn to very wild and crazy things in those instances and have a hard time fueling themselves which then that can also suffer if you do choose to um, breastfeed. I almost just called it milk. <laughs> I literally almost was just like, if you choose to milk, if you choose oh to my be, gosh. if you, if choose, you choose to milk, if you um, choose to milk your breast, <laughs> if you choose to breastfeed personally, um, then that's something where that can change your milk supply. And then that can honestly really alter your results as a whole. And it can put you in a bad spot where, again, we want to think about mentally, how do we put ourselves in the best spot? And that's what I always try to keep in mind of, hey, and a lot of clients, I even don't have step on the scale of like, we don't need to know your exact weight. We can see things through pictures, how close fit, how you feel. We can have good conversations on this. But I think it comes down to preparing clients to what to expect and being able to be there for them through it because things do change so much. And it could be of the first trimester, you feel like absolute dog shit and you can't leave the side of the toilet. And then the second, third trimester could be awesome. Yeah. So like the game plan may change. Fucking but crushing it. It, it just could change at all times. And so having someone who can talk you through that change is just so helpful because it is such a confusing time that there's such lack of information around or lack of education around. Yes. It's seeing your energy levels, like we already said, and your physique changes, like your belly stretching. You're like, oh shit, now I have these weird stretch marks. Like all of that messes with, I mean, messed with me and a lot of my clients throughout their pregnancy. And they come to me and they just feel so down because of something that essentially they don't have too much control Mm -hmm. over because no matter what, you're most likely going to gain at least 20 to 25 pounds when you're pregnant. And that's healthy weight. Yeah. Not even body fat. Like that's your amniotic fluid. That's just like blood. Your placenta, that's a whole new organ that Mm -hmm. takes up space. So that's something to where just listening to them and supporting them through the challenging times and giving them some reassurance like, hey, your feelings are valid. I know you may not feel your best right now, but look at all of the things you're still accomplishing throughout your pregnancy. Like you're still moving your body. You're still going to the gym or you're working out at home, whatever it may be. You're still at least hitting like X amount of calories. You're taking care of yourself. You're taking care of the baby that you're growing and you're still setting yourself up for success. And usually I can give them like that that little pep talk and they'll be like, oh, okay, like you're right. Like I've you're right. It's not that bad. Like, I mean, it still probably is that bad. But you know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like you still probably don't feel the best within your body. Yeah. But putting it into perspective, like I am still fucking crushing it. Mm-hmm. Even this is just a bad day. That's it. And we're gonna feel it. We're gonna lean into it once again. But tomorrow's new and hopefully speaking through those things with them gets them in a better mindset and more excited again. Yeah. And now that you are is it how many 
two years? Two, I was going to say two, but then I was trying to count back for how old Fallon was. <laughs> now being two years postpartum, all of those times like through pregnancy and postpartum, looking back on those, like what is something you would either tell your past self or like the feelings that are so different that it felt like this is my new reality and I'm never going to look a certain way again. <laughs> and like feeling that feeling that I'm sure a lot of clients express yeah. to you that now that you're two years like postpartum, what what does that even look like for you? I would say if I could tell my pregnancy self anything, it's that what you're going through right now in terms of your physique and how it looks, no matter how much you may hate like having to size up in your clothes, it's worth it. And no matter how much you may hate like seeing your stomach like stretch and it feels maybe just like softer as a whole, even during pregnancy, it's going to be okay. Like don't let it ruin your day. Don't let it cause like so much stress within yourself. It will get better. I promise. Like I wish I could give, well, more so my postpartum self. I wish I could give my postpartum self like a hug sometimes because that was awful. Like that shift for me was so hard. Um, I we spoke about this like a few, mm -hmm. I don't know when, but I was working out at home because I had no clue what the hell was going on. And I'd be like, well, I know I need to move my body because I feel like crap if I don't. And I used to just <laughs> hate working out at home. Mm -hmm. But when that was my only option and it started to make me feel better, like I just accepted it eventually. Like mm -hmm. I had almost probably a couple months where I was like, this is so stupid. Why would I even <laughs> work out? All of these things. And I just hated that my core was so soft given like all of the work I thought I was putting in during my pregnancy. I wasn't seeing the instant results that I wanted. So early postpartum, when I looked at my stomach, I'd be like, this is awful. Like, I'm embarrassed that I did all of these things during pregnancy. It didn't even pay off. Like, why am I doing it still? But then here I am two years later, and I'm pretty damn proud of myself you most days. <laughs> most days, um, because I know that, like, looking back, it did pay off. Yeah. All of the boring, like, little things, all of those 30 minute, 10 pound dumbbell workouts and the core stuff afterwards did pay off. And there was a shift in a different season of life that I entered where I did finally go to the gym and I did finally get back to like tracking my food and training hard and lifting heavy shit again. So if I could say anything, it's it's that. Like it will get better and continue to give yourself grace throughout the whole process. I love that. And like I said, I, I really am just so impressed by you uh, as a whole. And like I any of my clients that are moms, like I literally like almost cry in their check-ins when I talk about like how awesome I think that they are because yeah. it, it really is of like you are taking on so much new and you're taking on so much responsibility for so many other things and so many changes. And it's so easy to just cast yourself to the side. <laughs> you're and I'm, I'm cry. literally crying now. I'm but about to cry. <laughs> it is, it's so easy to cast yourself to the side. And it's so easy to think like so many things are happening to you. And right. you don't get to get back to where you want it to. And we've talked of like, we hate the term of like bounce back, where it's like, no, you're not going to freaking do that in your life. But it's being able to recognize like this was temporary. My body and my life changed and it's going to keep changing for these different seasons in my life. Right. And you have like shown up in each of those seasons. And like you said, of like there wasn't enough information. So like you learned about it. You figured it out for yourself. And you are so kick ass at work working with that moms <laughs> and you're so great at like everything you've done. Like I really have been just so impressed with you for throughout getting pregnant, like throughout pregnancy, postpartum, and now of like, I mean it when I say like, you are jacked. I'm so <laughs> impressed by like your core and like you inspire me all of the time to just like do the little shit oh. and just like show up. And like, that's why I always try to give you so much like um, words of affirmation of just like, you are crushing it. You <laughs> are doing it because I feel that way truly. And so I am just so glad that you said that as your words to, I'm like crying like a little baby right now. Oh my like, gosh. The waterworks started. If you guys are just listening to this, you don't even know. Um, Literally. You just go watch on YouTube and subscribe. <laughs> Because I know if you guys regularly listen that I've said you know before, that Sue cries. you know that Sue cries, but <laughs> I've also said that out of everyone who watches, regularly watches our channel, I've said before only 10% are subscribed. Well, you know what? The stats got worse, probably because more people are viewing our channel, which is awesome, <laughs> but only 6% of people who regularly watch
watch our channel or subscribed. So I'm here crying, <laughs> asking you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, that wasn't planned, but you know, it works. So I am going to end this on, even though we are laughing, having a good time, I'm going to end it on a fun note. Um, what was one of the weirdest combinations of food or cravings you had throughout pregnancy? Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. <laughs> I have no idea. I just remember, I feel like I didn't have any crazy, crazy cravings. Um, but I don't know. It's not weird, but I used to never eat fish. Mm -hmm. And all I wanted was like salmon and mashed potatoes, <laughs> which for mashed me, potatoes. yes, mashed potatoes. And not even, no hate, no shade, but... <laughs> From cheddars. So <laughs> once again, no hate, no shade, cheddars. But also hate and shade. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> uh, there was a cheddars right by like the weird small apartment we lived in at the time before we got our house. And I'd be like, Zach, can we please go to cheddars and get please. some salmon? And they got you this like bourbon glaze and they had really good mashed potatoes and the crescent rolls. Um, so that, I mean, once again, not like disgusting or too weird, yeah. but it, I never ate salmon until I was pregnant. That's and then so funny. the more you know, Fun fact: Salmon is great to eat during pregnancy mm -hmm. because of the and fatty salmon acids. Roe. Right? Oh God, the salmon roe tastes awful, but good for you. That is something I always recommend to my clients. I don't think I've had anyone actually get it yet. Um, I force myself to eat it. I'm gonna force myself. Yeah, I'm gonna hate hell. I'm gonna hate everything. Literally but. hell. Like you. Oh God, I could just want to throw up just thinking about <laughs> the thought of it going down. Um, but that the salmon roe was probably the fucking weirdest yeah. thing I ate throughout. Probably the <laughs> worst tasting. But uh. salmon roe is like essentially raw fish eggs. Yeah. But it's so good for the fetal development. And I mean, for yourself too, it's mm -hmm. one of the best forms of the fish oil that you can get, obviously. Um, but it tastes like shit. But Eat it if you can. Eat it if you can. We hope we sold you on this thing that you should really do. <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend. Well, we're always going to be honest. That's right. the great thing. We're not going to try and fool you. We'll tell you. This isn't going to taste good. No. But it's going to be good for you. It's going to be great. It's going to be so <laughs> beneficial, though. It's going to taste like ass. Have you seen the reels and stuff where it's like a wife saying like what her pregnancy craving yes. is and then the husband like makes it or goes and the gets it? The one that we just uh, watched. The nachos like, one. Yes. <laughs> and there was like a spaghetti and a peanut butter and oh, jelly. Oh, yeah. The peanut butter. I was jelly. like, what is she doing? Oh, that was, I mean, I always wanted a peanut butter and jelly and Greek yogurt for breakfast. And that was kind of what told me I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I was like, why am I eating like a toddler? Was it that or was it Alex? <laughs> oh, that too. Alex was like, hey. Um, I was like, I don't know why I feel like I got hit by a truck. <laughs> It's like, well, your cycle's so this, off, so we can start there. This was the beginning of, like, COVID. So it was right. like, oh, my gosh, is it COVID? And yes. then Alex was like, I I really think you should probably get a pregnancy test. I remember that email. And I was like, yeah, I'll get one and take it when Zach gets home. I'll update you. And I remember he was like, so? And I was like, fuck. You're you like, right. you were right. Damn it. But that's okay. I remember... When I was at the gym, I'd be like, I really just don't feel good to like some people that I know. And now we still joke where we're like, yeah, we didn't feel good, but really it was Fallon. It was so Fallon. It's big fine. foul. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this, then please share it with a friend. If you haven't gone and subscribed to our YouTube channel, I literally cried for you. So <laughs> you have to subscribe. Good now. to know that you don't care about me <laughs> at all. Um, but uh, if you are interested in working with Katie, regardless of if you are not pregnant at all right or if you are pregnant planning to get pregnant or going through your po postpartum journey um, or even trying to heal things from your postpartum journey that you feel like you didn't have the the best attention on uh, then I will leave Katie's uh, application in the show notes in the description and we will get on a call with you you'll get on a call with Lauren she is awesome and she'll tell you all about the service what you need to know and see if you're going to be a good fit for Katie so um, we'll have that below but Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll catch you in the next one.